smells great. It's supposed to smell like a toasty olive oil on a toasty bread because this is called frena bread. Frena bread is a specialty Moroccan bread. We are eating it at a Moroccan restaurant. This is Pala Mediterranean Cuisine, Hollywood, Florida. This is called frena bread. Now, frena means, if I'm not mistaken, an oven in Moroccan because, you know, you have the one town oven. The bakery had the oven. That's where you got your bread. And right away, when you smell it, you're supposed to smell that olive oily, olive oily kind of toasty. This is Middle Eastern bread akin to other Middle Eastern breads, but very specifically a Moroccan dish because it's frena and it's very specific. What separates Frena is the fact that it gets kind of like a jiggly puff in how it's how it's done. That hot oven, it's, it's moister in there, it's more fermented in there. If you like a doughy challah, a Frena is like that doughy pita jiggle that you're looking for, and I think that's why it snacks the best. Today, the special of the day is Kuba Serek, which is not a Moroccan dish, but in fact an Iraqi dish. It is that semolina kind of dumpling with beef inside, and it comes in this great beady kind of, kind of warm broth. And the most significant part of this whole experience is the spice blend that is used on the inside. So you got soup, you get that amazing color red, you get that dumpling with that beef inside. I'm gonna put a little bit of rice on it like that, and that is going to be it. It's, it's a semolina dough. It's this great kind of dumpling dough. Like imagine an Iraqi like matzo ball if it was a sinker. Now imagine there's a sweetness from the beets because beets are a root and they can be sweet when done correctly. And then imagine you're throwing a little bit of spice. Most generally it's something called baharat, which is a very complicated spice blend that just kind of gives you kind of that clovey kind of warmth that would match with an earthy sweet and it carries through throughout that. This is a signature dish to the culture. I have something here called a tagine. It is a domed Moroccan cooking vessel. And the reason it's domed is because it allows the water and the steams and the drips to cook. And what they have inside is couscous. This is a semolina couscous that is hand formed and hand rolled into these little perfect kind of pebbles and it comes with the beautiful Moroccan flavor of yellow broth and then the piece of chicken. I think Moroccan chicken soup might be the best kind of chicken soup because this is incredible. And you have this great, great steam couscous that is kind of like pillowy and texturally and carries all the heady, heady flavor of that incredibly seasoned homey soup. And it is so familiar to my Jewish soul, but so kind of different because it's totally Moroccan. It's it. I'm Moroccan, you are Moroccan. I love Moroccan food. The sandwich is the classic schnitzel, that classic Israeli kind of schnitzel on them, chicken fingers kind of thing, but with all the Moroccan accents, like the mapucha and the spicy and the cabbage. And then they say, you know what? We're gonna put it in a sandwich. And here we have a Moroccan sweet challah schnitzel sandwich. Every single part of that sandwich is intentional. There is a Moroccan challah, which means it's kind of sweeter the dough, it's, 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 it's chewier. The schnitzel is done in a chicken finger kind of thin schnitzel individual kind of spot. Everything here is built on what, what I would have at my like Moroccan Shabbos table when I want to make a chicken sandwich. I think King David had an affinity for tagines. We have a Moroccan beef soup, that fantastic couscous. It's got the chickpeas, it's got the beef, it's cooked it down to it, just a soft consistency. This is cooking it for a long time with the intention of you enjoying it because it takes time to make. Mm. It's Moroccan beef stew. The flavor's there. It's spicy and, and kind of sweet and fruity and, and clovey and, and a little like kind of, kind of, you know, just that kind of curry-esque like kind of heat. And it is wonderful. This is not a Moroccan dish, but this is an Israeli Jerusalem kind of Arab shook kind of cross-cultural hit that's been around for a long time. That is called kanafe. I mean, kanafe is when you take kadaif, which is the shredded phyllo, 
and you give it that good kind of buttery soak and you crisp it and you put cheese inside and you cover it up and you get this thing called kanafe and it's a sweet savory kind of dessert. But this is a flaysic place so the inside is more of a plant-based cheese but it's a great identifier of the neighborhood we're in. Sweet, crispy, buttery, cheesy, also hard. This is a delicious Middle Eastern sweet that's defined by, you know, a touch of rose water and the simple syrup that goes over it. And the saffron yellow are all the flavors and the pistachio is part of that sweet. And then you have this cheese and it's, it's, it's not, not real cheese, it's a plant-based cheese. It's a little stretchy, it's a little goopy and it works and it is delicious and sweet, just like everything they're doing here. This place here is, is a personal space. The people running this shop are hands-on running the shop, making the food for you every day. This is their lunch counter, their dinner counter, their living room. This is an, an example of that essential feeling of being in a Middle Eastern family. Moroccan family, Moroccan grandparents, this is the food you're eating, this is the food you're enjoying with the rest of the people. They're all Moroccan in here, man. The food's that kind of good, all right? This is the space, this is Paolo Mediterranean, Hollywood, Florida. Oh, 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 oh,